Hey guys, today we'll be looking at measurement and uncertainty. So uncertainty is the range of values that your true value can lie between. So we take for example, a length was measured using a ruler of, we got 31 plus or minus 0 0.5 centimeters. So what this value is telling us is that the true value can actually be either 31 itself, or we can minus 31 to get we can minus the 0 0.5 to get 30.5, or we can add the 0 0.5 to get the 31.5 centimeters. So therefore, from this statement, we know that the 0 0.5 is our uncertainty, right? So we always include our uncertainty by writing plus or minus the smallest division on your measuring instrument. <coughs> so in uncertainties, we have combination of uncertainties because physics entails use of equations. So if we have an equation here that says x equal y plus t, where each quantity here is a measurable quantity, then our uncertainty is x is equal to uncertainty in y plus the uncertainty in t. And if it's a negative or a minus t, this uncertainty is still a plus. So if it's plus or minus in the equation, we just add the uncertainties together. So for example, if we have current i equals i1 plus i2, and if i1 is 2, i2 is 1.5, then i would be putting it i1 and i2 here. So it's 2 plus 1.5, and we get i to be 3.5, right? Now our uncertainty in i would be, because here is an addition, so it's the uncertainty in i equal uncertainty in i1 plus uncertainty in i2. So uncertainty in i1 is 0 0.1, uncertainty in i2 is 0 0.2, and then we get 0 0.3. So our total answer that we would have would be i is equal to 3.5 plus or minus 0 0.3 amperes. Right? Now let's look at, look at it if it's multiplication. So in this case, we have x equals a pi y t. So everything here is being multiplied, but we know that a here is a constant. Now, the constant there means that it is not a measurable quantity, meaning it is not an instrument to measure it. It's just one number each time. So it doesn't vary according to a different quantity, right? So that value is just one set value. So we don't have an instrument to measure that. So it's called a constant. And constant means there is no uncertainty in that value because it's not measurable by using an instrument. So therefore, it's, this is known as our fractional uncertainty. So it's the uncertainty of x over the value of x equals the uncertainty of y because a and pi are constants, right? So it's the uncertainty of y over y value plus the uncertainty of t over the value of t, right? And if we include values of powers, then the power will be brought down to multiply between our fractional uncertainty, right? So these are two laws that you need to know. And let's use this one in an example that I'll show. All right, so for this example, we have volume equal pi r squared times L, where r is 3.30 plus or minus 0 0.05 centimeters, L is 25.4 plus or minus 0 0.4 centimeters, and we're asked to find the volume, right? So from this statement, we know that pi here, this pi is a constant, and it doesn't have a new, so it's unmeasurable using an instrument, so we're going to ignore it. So to find the uncertainty in V, right? And since we're having multiplication here, that means we have to find a fractional uncertainty, which is, and this is R to the power. So that means we take down the power and we find the fractional of R plus fraction of L, right? So before we can find our 
uncertainty in the volume, we have to find the volume, the value of V. So to find the value of V, we substitute, so it's 22 over 7 for pi, and R is 3.30. We square that, and we multiply by the length, which is 25.4, and we get our volume here is 869.33 centimeter cubed. All right. So now that we have volume, we can substitute our value in our equation. So to put the value of the volume here, 2 on 13 R over the value of R plus on 13 L over the value of L. Right? So all this here is 0 0.04. This here is 0 0.02. Right? Now we add these, we get 0 0.06. And then we multiply by the value of V to get the uncertainty of V, which is 52.16. So therefore, our final answer will be the volume would be 869.33 plus or minus our uncertainty, which is 52.16 centimeter cube. Right? So uncertainty, combining uncertainty, is the same step for any given equation and values that you have received. Right? And part of this lesson will be homogeneous equations. So homogeneous equations in physics is very important because it tells us that the left side of the equation units equal to the right side of the equation units to make them balance, right? So this is ensuring that unit on both sides of the equation is also balanced, right? So let's look at work. So work is force times distance, right? So Work is force times distance. So we know for work, it is actually measured in joule, right? Or Newton meter. Right? So let's look at the base unit for the joule or Newton meter. So force is actually given by mass times acceleration, right? So the mass is in kilograms multiplied by acceleration of the meters per second squared, okay? So that is force, newton, and then it's multiplied by m. So newton, newton is actually the newton multiplied by m. So we get kilogram meter squared per second squared, okay? So that is for work. So work is kilogram meter square per second square. So that's the left side. Right? So let's check the right side. So right side is the force and force again is, is kilogram meters per second square. Multiply by distance and distance distance is measuring a base unit of meters. So if we do that we get kilogram meter plus times meter meter square. This so this is our right side. You notice both sides are equal, so we we'll see that this equation is four units. Right? So this is how you find if an equation is homogeneous or not. Right? So if the left side is not equal to the right side, then we see that that equation is not homogeneous. So I want you to actually try this one and comment below if it's homogeneous. So it's kinetic energy, which is half mv squared. Alright, and I'll help you out because kinetic energy is measured in joule, and the joule is kilogram meter squared per second squared. So you're going to check now if that side is equal to kilogram meter squared per second squared. Alright guys, so that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed and you learned something or you just use it as a refresher. See you next time.